Of course, more so than any other vehicle I've witnessed, the Cybertruck has a lot of hype around it. And there's a lot of speculation and, of course, a lot of clickbait, false videos, false news being reported on, claiming on when Cybertruck production will start, when deliveries will begin, and it's not helping at all that Tesla has gone very, very quiet on the truck and has even stripped the website of many details about when to expect deliveries and stripped the website of references to separate tiers or pricing. And I've speculated a lot on my channel, I'm like kind of the chief speculator of the internet about how much it'll cost, what the range will be, the disappointment, and where things will be worse than expected, but also where things will be better than expected. But in today's video, we're just going to be talking about timelines, about when to expect the Cybertruck, which at the end of the day, Tesla probably does not even know the answer to these timelines. They likely have aspirational targets, but there's so many unknown unknowns when it comes to suppliers, the 4680 ramp and the chip shortage and all kinds of problems. But when I say timelines, I'm not referring to specific dates. I'm just referring to things that you will see leading up to Cybertruck deliveries and things you should look for in this stage of bringing the truck to market. So number one, construction process of the Cybertruck assembly line, because there are so many talented drone pilots out there that are watching every move at Giga Texas. Honestly, it's going to be very, very difficult for Tesla to ramp up Cybertruck production without us knowing about it. So there's a couple of things to look for in this particular step. For one, Jeff Roberts, Joe Tegmeyer, they have awesome channels and they consistently fly around the Giga Texas facility. And we know from the Cyber Rodeo that there's a designated section of this facility specifically reserved for basically Cybertruck production because Tesla has said time and time again, you know, they're starting with the Model Y and they showed the layout of the factory to optimize for Model Y production. In kind of that southwestern corner of of Giga Texas has been labeled for future production, and Tesla has said that Cybertruck production will be at Giga Texas after Model Y has ramped. So basically, we know the exact location where Cybertruck assembly will begin, and they've also talked about the fact that the Cybertruck will be using the largest single piece castings in the world, and the Giga presses that Tesla uses for their single piece castings are not small. They're not the type of package that you could sneak into the factory overnight and you would miss it. it would honestly be a very obvious and long process that could be spotted from the outside based on the comments Elon and Tesla has made about the 12,000 ton Giga presses that are going to need to be installed for Cybertruck production to begin. So that section of the factory is pretty much empty right now, but those Giga presses going in will absolutely need to happen likely close to a year before first deliveries begin because as we know with the ramp up of Model Y in China and Berlin and of course now in Texas, you don't go from like moving in a few Giga presses and moving in some robots to first deliveries very quickly. So the fact that Tesla has not installed the Giga presses yet means that you basically should not expect any Cybertruck deliveries within the next 12 months because we've still got a long ways to go before they're ready to start using that kind of equipment. And that staging is not the type of thing you see a couple weeks or a couple months even before first delivery. So that's the first step to know that Cybertruck production has begun. Another Another good indicator is to check the shareholder deck, which for the longest time listed Giga Texas and Giga Berlin as under construction in the Model Y segment. Once Cybertruck production is coming up, that will be updated on the shareholder deck as well. Whereas right now it just says in development. That means Cybertruck production is not creeping up around the corner. We've still got a way to go. Secondly, after the Giga presses have been installed and Tesla starts moving in more heavy duty equipment, who knows what kind of complex machinery they're going to need for mass producing exoskeletons. But after that, you're going to see a lot more prototype sightings because it's fairly easy for Tesla to test the Giga Texas structural battery pack Model Y because, you know, from the outside, it basically looks like any other Model Y. They can test those things around, but it's easy to forget that back before Fremont was delivering Model Ys, there was actually like a solid four months of Model Ys being spotted in the area tested by employees. And of course, the Cybertruck is such a bizarre are different looking vehicle, it will be a lot harder for them to disguise that and keep it hidden from public roads, which means that once they've started like pilot production of the Cybertruck, like not customer ready vehicles, but vehicles that they want to test and calibrate equipment with, you're going to start seeing Cybertrucks drive around the Giga Texas facility a lot more regularly. And it's been over a month since the first employee deliveries of the 4680 Model Y, and Tesla has still not actually started customer deliveries. It's still just 
just restricted to employees within the company. This is likely because there's a lot of testing and new manufacturing methods that they want to calibrate and get right. There's also likely a huge number of employees that are happy enough to buy these prototype vehicles and test them. And because the Cybertruck is so high in demand, I expect a very similar situation with the truck. So this basically means we will start seeing Cybertrucks drive around in public. Employees will be owning them, using them for their daily lives, even taking them to superchargers. And of course, people will be taking pictures and videos of any Cybertruck sighting they get. But I don't think this process will be a short one. I don't think it'll be like, oh, we spotted like 10 Cybertrucks on public streets now. That means deliveries must be a couple weeks away. Like, no, because of how different the Cybertruck is and how many new manufacturing methods there are, there could easily be a multi-quarter gap between employee deliveries and customer deliveries. And I know that's going to upset a lot of you. Some of you are going to be like, why the heck do all these other employees get to drive them around? I've been waiting on my deposit for years. How come I can't get mine yet? They're going to want to make sure the crash testing is safe with the exoskeleton. They're going to want some long-term data on the off-roading capabilities of this new suspension system, how this new quad motor powertrain is going to perform because they've never built at scale a quad motor powertrain. They've also never done rear wheel steering. They've also never mass produced Tesla armored glass before. All of this stuff you want to catch on early and the best way to do that is to deliver your first vehicles to employees and let the employees find the kinks, let the employees find the bugs before your actual paying customers do. So that's what I mean by before official customer deliveries begin, there's likely to be at least several dozen, maybe even several hundred cyber trucks that are owned and operated by employees just driving them around, not just for testing, but just using in their daily life to find where there's issues. And next, yeah, sadly, that is not the last step of cyber truck production. We're actually going to see EPA filings for the cyber truck long before first deliveries begin, because if you guys can remember, Tesla actually posted the EPA listing for the standard range Model Y all-wheel drive back in like February, like several months before Cyber Rodeo even took place, which means that yes, they were having employees test the 4680 Model Y even before the Cyber Rodeo event took place. And the fact that you still can't even order that particular Model Y means that yes, I do think we will actually get efficiency numbers and an EPA filing on the Cybertruck likely two, three, maybe four months before before first deliveries technically begin. So that's another stage of the process that's going to give us lots and lots of warnings and red flags before Cybertruck actually begins deliveries. And none of the things I've talked about today have officially begun. You know, there's been some limited Cybertruck prototype testing at the Fremont track, but it's missing crucial components. And of course it's not a production model. So I do not count those as actual employee testing. I consider that when the Cybertruck is actually being routinely driven on on public streets. And I'm saying all of these things to keep expectations in check because I know there's a lot of misinformation spread around the Cybertruck, especially on YouTube with all of these clickbait channels that try to make it sound like Cybertruck is here and deliveries are starting next month. It's like, no, look for all of these things I listed in today's videos well in advance before first deliveries will begin. It's not going to creep up on us. I don't think Tesla is sandbagging and I don't believe it's going to creep up on us in the next couple weeks or the next couple months. Oh, actually, Actually, it's here and it's way faster than we expected. Like, yeah, you'll all be checking your calendars, checking your watches, thinking, okay, employees have been driving around the Cybertruck for four months now. When are we going to get our first, you know, customer delivery? It's going to be a slow process, especially based on how long it's taken for Tesla to actually start deliveries of Giga Texas Model Ys because they've been building like hundreds of them so far and basically just delivering them all to employees and not really letting actual customers order them. Them, and it's probably just because there's a lot of equipment and testing that they want to get done. And there's also just a lot of employees that want to buy a Tesla. So expect a very slow, gradual rollout of the Cybertruck as well, given how high the demand is. And also, I know as much as you guys disagree with me on this one, I also still think it will be $100,000 and probably a little over 300 miles of range. But for the supercharging, the performance, the efficiency, the durability, and the software and the silicon on the inside, I still expect there will be a large number of people willing to go forward with the Cybertruck. Yes, even if it's not great at towing. I know so many of you want it to be good at towing and so many of you want the long range. I'm not denying it would be useful. I'm just saying there's demand for high price, 
lower range pickup trucks as already proven by the tremendous sales of the Rivian, the F-150 Lightning, and the electric Hummer, which there's tens of thousands of people who want that thing. Range is terrible, price is terrible, there's still demand for it. Same thing with the Cybertruck. Over time, as demand starts to taper off, I'm sure they will make higher range and more affordable versions, but for the first version, do not expect it to be a great deal or an incredible bargain. It will be expensive, but of course I could be wrong. Let me know what you think I'm wrong about down in the comments below. Thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon, helping me afford a Tesla. We'll be taking delivery of, hopefully, within the next couple months. And everyone just watching the video, that seriously helps out a ton as well. So take care. Have an excellent rest of your day.